What is up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game taking over for Brian on the audio, and Thunder God is where we are at. This is this is by far the hardest boss in this alliance raid. Positioning is key. The map is going to be divided into three sections, A, B, and C. You'll each get two of the six circles, yours and the one clockwise to you. When you get marked, it is best if everybody just knows to move clockwise. It wouldn't matter if it was counterclockwise, just as long as we're all consistent. Holy Sword is going to go off in three different ways. If the swords are sticking straight out, they're going to hit the platform that they are hovering over. If they're shoved into the ground, they're going to be an outer donut and you need to be inside of it. And if they're held horizontal, they're going to be the inner donut and you need to run out. The next thing you're going to see is cleansing strike. This is a healer check. It's going to mark the whole party down to one health. They have to be topped off. So top everybody off as quickly as possible. Uh, Shadow Blade is going to mark people with these red kind of blood things. They need to move out. Clockwise is what really helps here because as you get a bunch of these, if they start to overlap each other, you can make it very hard for the party not to end up wiped. Here's an example of that. You can see that they've left very little wiggle room for this party to kind of survive here. And this can result in wiping the, the raid effectively. Uh, so definitely pay attention to where you need to be here, especially if you're marked clockwise and away from everybody else. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can get marked here. So as the fight gets more intense, this becomes more important. Crush weapon is going to mark somebody with like a red set of triangles. There's a guy there off the left. He's going to stand in it and, and get hit and it's going to take him down because next it's going to drop a series of AOEs. You're going to see another guy marked here who doesn't move fast enough and it drops the blo uh, blast marker on everybody. So you've got to move it away from everybody and then keep running clockwise. And then the next thing you're going to see is the other crush. There's crush weapon and crush helm. And you're going to see that uh, after we get done with this, crush helm is going to be a nice big hit, um, nice big tank buster. And so you definitely want to Watch your tanks on this one. Everybody is tanking simultaneously uh, each and every fight. And so if you're not keeping your tanks topped off, they can absolutely get wrecked. You're going to get tossed into an ad phase. This is going to mark somebody and that person is going to have an inner donut and an outer donut put on them in one order or the other. Uh, it can be either. And so you just need to stand along that border and wait for the first one to go off, move. And then immediately after this, there's going to be a stack mechanic. It's important that you stay with your group on this because if any of the markings get done wrong, people get confused, you end up with two stack markers in the same place here, and it can nearly wipe an alliance. After this, you're all going to stand in the middle, you know, get everybody topped off, and then you're going to get tossed back into the fight. There's lots of beautiful animations in this raid, so definitely sit back, enjoy all the visuals, and then prepare to get back into the mess. Now, this is mostly going to be rinse and repeat, just more intense. That is that you've seen just about everything you need to worry about. There's just a little bit more uh, as far as kind of how often you have to move. There's this dusk blade mechanic that pops up. You need to have three on each. So if you just divide your party into two sets of four, that should kind of help guarantee that. So either, you know, uh, melee DPS, one melee DPS stays with the healers and tanks, or, or if you have four red mages, send all them over there. Something so that everybody knows where they need to be, because that will absolutely kill everybody. Then you're going to have these donuts pop up. Up. Some won't have something in it. Some will have these ice wolves. Run to your ice wolf, your party's ice wolf, and it must go down before burst goes off. So stand where it's safe. Kill the ad. This is all mechanics you have seen before. Nothing new. Now, we're moving on to our final fight, Ultimate. You've killed Thunder God. It wasn't very complex, but it was very hard. This is going to just be a lot more intense as far as the number of AoEs to be aware of. There's two big phases here. Holy Four is gonna be just some, some don't stand in bad, it's gonna mark people, or a light, don't stand in bad. Uh, you're going to see that kind of theme here, but you're going to see everything from previous raids. Now you're going to see everybody marked with these pink things here. You'll see this group here stands in them. It kills them. So if it's on you, move it away from everybody else. They can't overlap. Grand Cross is going to put these little pillars up. The pillars are going to shoot out these laser beams on their, their orthogonal directions. So make sure you're aware of where all those are. This is going to get a little harder later in the fight. And then we're going to see demigods kind of come out and they're going to perform attacks from previous raids. So we We've got water spouts, don't stand in those, and this is only intense because this is overlaid with all of their other AoEs. And so you're going to see Aura Light come out and the water spouts are up. And so it can be very easy if you get caught in the wrong place to go down. 
Now we're going to see those pink things come out once again, and then it's gonna be time for the next demigod. Now it's time. Now when we talk about the clock, you remember stand in the slow clock when the fast clocks go off, run into those, and then back into the slow clock. But as you overlap those pink circles, you can see how it's very easy to get people killed. Then we have Demi Leo come out. Once again, this is just, if you've done the previous raids, you'll know where to stand. He's gonna summon those pillars. Pay attention to how they're cut, because Timber, if it falls on you, you are going to die. So lots of ways to die in this fight, but other than that, it's nothing too crazy on its own. It's just, are you standing where you need to be and is everybody around you standing where they need to be? Now we start to overlap them all together now. So if you thought that they were easy on their own, let's see if you can do more of them at once. Now, as we move through phase one, you get pushed into phase two. My understanding of this fight is that if you die during phase two, that you get to start on phase two. Uh, so please, please let me know if that changes in the comments below. Um, you'll see that obviously getting through phase one multiple times over could be very difficult. So as we move into here, you're gonna see big, beautiful visuals, basically kill the ad before your shield gives up. Uh, it's, it's something we've seen over and over again. So you'll see here, they wipe, and then you kind of just start back where you left off. Uh, so we're back, and uh, that's that's my understanding of this fight and how this is meant to be progressed. As we kill Ruination before Barrier Strength goes off, it is just most important that you're sticking to your rotation. There really isn't anything dangerous here, so it's just a straight-up DPS check. Now we move into the next phase, and there's going to be things to not stand in, but then there's going to be wind that kind of eastward march where everything shifts and so you need to be aware and don't just go back into kind of zoning in on your rotation the moment you think you're safe because all of these things can move and the, the, you have to constantly be situationally aware there's never a moment in this phase that you're going to be just truly safe you'll see these laser beams here very tough for everybody to avoid lots of people go down now we start putting up the demigods now we start putting up everything else and we just start layering everything we've done and as long as somebody knows hey on those arrows somebody needs to be following those standing on them so that they can absorb the thing coming down as long as everybody is is doing what they need to do from the previous boss fights in the alliance raids up to this point it is all just rinse and repeat but the hard thing is is it's rinse and repeat but you're starting to overlap them more and more at the same time so you've seen every mechanic once at this point but now can you do them two mechanics three mechanics at a time now this maze is going to pop up and this is this is just run to the front of the maze the black ground is not safe you've got to get off of that the only place that's safe is the boss so run there but a lot like when you see kind of meteors or boulders falling in a dungeon try not to get hit by those you'll see that Brian gets clipped by one takes out three quarters of his hell so if you do that twice it's going to kill you there's a chance that it could kill you if you're just once if you're under geared or or if you've already taken damage from something uh we get back now that the whole world turns back to being safe to stand on and then we go back to overlapping these until the boss goes down grab your loot do this once a week and that is it. Guys, I attempted this myself several times. Uh, getting in there week one can be very tough. It's a lot to learn. There is no one individual mechanic here that's hard. Everything is just okay. If you get marked, run clockwise. But don't get caught with his swords coming down. But don't, and it's all these caveats. And so you need to learn how each mechanic is ideally dealt with, but then understand how all the other things are dealt with. So like with those pink things that come down where we have the clocks, the pink things, you need to run away from everybody else and away from the other the pink discs because if you overlap somebody else, you're gonna get them killed. But you also wanna pay attention to the clocks. And so you have to decide, there may be times that you have to decide, okay, I'm gonna stand in one of the clocks and take it, but then don't run into the other clock and take that one too. That way you only take the clock. And healers, pay attention if you have somebody who looks like they're gonna get caught by something, try to top them off because it's possible that the heal between those mechanics hitting, you heal them after the clock hits them, they, they survive that, and and then the you know their pink disc goes off and they live through that too and this is going to be a huge healer check dps checks are mostly just to make sure that you are still pressing your buttons and not only avoiding mechanics but they're few and far between in these fights the vast majority of 4.5 across the board feels like 
You've seen a whole bunch of AOEs across this expansion. Do you know what they all do and can you avoid all of them? Uh, so it's really much more of a dance than anything else. As long as everybody in all the alliances is not getting hit by things, eventually I do believe that both of these bosses would go down. There doesn't seem to be too much of like hard mechanics. You have to get it down within six minutes or something or you die. Uh, so it does feel a lot more like Gearing is mostly to help your survivability, and obviously the faster it goes down, the less time you have to be perfect for. So it would be best if everybody was doing lots of damage, but as long as the healers are totally on top of their game, and as long as the DPS are not standing anything, there should be enough DPS to get you through any of the phases or checks where that's important. Guys, I absolutely think these fights are complex and that the way people do them and the etiquette, you know, maybe it'll move from clockwise to counterclockwise. Maybe the optimal locations of A, B, and C will change where those markers go. It's all about communication here. And as we perfect clearing this dungeon and it gets a little bit easier and his gear, gear scores go up, um, just keep in mind that there could always be somebody that's new to the dungeon. So make sure that they know where they need to stand. If they're dying to something more than once, make sure that, hey, you know, hey, noticed you got clipped by that. Hey, you were one of the ones we assigned to go clockwise. Do we need to put a separate marker up for you or mark a certain party member who's been doing it correctly and is going where you need to be? Uh, so make sure you just help people through this. The Alliance Raids are a great time to really build community because it is 24 people with a common goal uh, and and this is the last of these raids for this expansion so this should be enjoyed this should be savored they are beautiful fights I don't expect them to be something that you constantly get clears through for at least the first couple weeks so I went in there did several attempts uh, we never got the final boss down hence me saying like I don't really understand how the phase one phase two thing works because I'm going entirely off of everything I've been told because I I have Brian's footage and I have talked to people who've cleared it but I myself have not been able to get my clear yet I'm gonna go work on that today it's it's only been out for a day or two so I'm gonna go get started on that uh, my name's Chris with work to game hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you so much for hanging out any tips tricks changes in etiquette anything like that down below better understanding of the mechanics as we see them more feel free to share them in the comments I hope you guys have a great week. Enjoy 4.5, get ready for Blue Mage, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's me. Oh, well, if you don't know me, my name's Terry. I'm a beautiful Tyrannosaurus from Texas, and it just it doesn't get more country than that. I tell you what, I grew up in these parts. I was resurrected by a ghost, and that ghost told me that I need to come out and hang out on work to games YouTube channel to tell everybody they should totally hit that thumbs up. Thumbs down make Terry hungry. It makes me hungry. You hear me? Hungry. Anyway, Terry, just keep it keep it together. Keep keep it together, Terry. All right, guys. So, uh, with that doubt, that be sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit subscribe if you haven't already to see more of me and my beautiful my beautiful nose. Okay. Okay. All right. Good talking to you. I'll see you guys soon. I'll see you real soon. Terry, the Tyrannosaurus from Texas. <laughs>